Hey everybody, it's Millie with Crafting in My PJs. Welcome to my channel. Happy you're joining me here today. Today, uh, Crafting in My PJs is a channel dedicated to quick, easy crafts anybody can do. I use a lot of Dollar Tree products and um, lately I have been sticking to more paper crafting because I find that fun. And um, so let's jump right in. Was at Dollar Tree the other day. I did a haul video and this was part of it. And I found these, uh, all of the, the C stuff is out. Um, Shore Living, Shore Living is the brand name. There it is right there. All of that is out. And a couple months ago, I participated in a challenge and I used a placemat from Dollar Tree to make a junk journal. And it worked out so well that I had decided that I wanted to make another junk journal or another journal. I'm not going to say junk journal in this case, um, out of the placemat. And um, I want this to be more, well, actually, I'm hoping we make two out of it. I want it to be something that uh, can be more traditional as far as a journal goes with maybe just a little bit of decoration. Um, and I'll explain more about that later. So if you're here today and you like paper crafting or just crafting in general, I'm so glad you joined me. Um, don't forget that like and subscribe, which now's a perfect time to do it because we're going to get down to the table and so while I'm getting us down to the table, you can go hit those buttons and that would be great. All right, guys, I'll see you at the table. Okay, we are down at the table now. And this is our placemat, the, the one that's by Shore Living. Um, I have, after doing the journal a couple months ago for Paper Terrace's uh, challenge, I decided that I wanted to do something similar but then a little bit different. Um, this is an 11 by 17 placemat. You can see it on there. And what I did for the other one was basically folded it in half. I did cut off an inch or two and um, made a journal that way. But I've decided that I would like to take this journal and I would like to make two of them and it would be somewhere in the vicinity. It's gonna be a little bit smaller than what you see because there's some edging that you have to do. So it measures, when you fold it in half, it measures five and a half by eight and a half. And if we give it an inch spine, because I don't want these to be chunky monkey type journals. Well, one of them could turn into that, but it'll be on the small side uh, the other one I want to be more of a traditional writing journal that no, not a whole lot of decoration. So that knocks us down to five inches right there. And then there'll be a little bit of edging that might be lost in the construction. So all in all, I think we might end up with about a four and a half inch wide journal. And it'll probably be about seven and a half inches high, roughly. We'll see. All right. So the last one, I put a manila folder on the inside to give it some stability, but I wanted that soft journal feel. This time I will do one with the manila, but I also wanted to try using maybe a... Um, foam sheet. The problem is the only foam sheet I have is black and I have a feeling that's going to show through. We'll see. Uh, I don't even, it's not even big enough. So that won't work. I also had these um, felt sheets from Dollar Tree. So if I found maybe a white one and a blue one and put two together, that might give me stability and softness. Let's see what's in this pack. These are Dollar Tree felt sheets. And I find them a great thing to have on hand 
They're already cut. They have a little stiffness to them. So they're not like a, um, like the felt you buy off the roll. And so uh, for projects. Okay, so if I did like that, I think that would give us some stability there. So let's see what that feels like. Okay, we'll put that over there. We'll put that back together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna try and make the covers, the two covers. And the first thing I need to find are my fabric scissors. Did anybody else have a mom who sewed at home and you would get absolutely in major trouble if you touch those fabric scissors on anything but fabric. My mom was a beautiful seamstress. I mean, very, very talented. But we learned quite quickly one thing you did not do was touch her scissors. I didn't even use her scissors if I was doing something with fabric. Nope, 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 nope. All right, so now we're cut in half. That gives us one opening already, because we cut. And I do plan on stitching all the way around. How did I do the other one? Let's see. I did stitch all the way around, even though I had not cut this seam. These two seams were cut. Um, I do want to zigzag, I think, all the way around, and we'll see what that looks like. But I do want to cu cut these sewn edges. I don't want to have one open or one frayed edge and then uh, three sewn edges. So I will trim. I'm going to barely trim off the edges. All right, so let's see what, what it looks like. Uh, it's going to be two. Let's see. We'll just trim this down. Felt, I assume, counts as material, right? I don't know what happened to my mother's scissors. I'm sure my sister or I took them after she passed or my dad had them, somebody had them. I don't know where they are now. I do have her pinking shears. I did somehow end up with those. All right, so we're gonna put that in there and yeah, the blue doesn't bleed through. If I had a darker color, it still doesn't really bleed through bad. So I could very maybe have done that black. I don't know. Oh, I think we're gonna have to cut off a little bit more. A little bit more. If you have rotary scissors or rotary cutter, it makes it really easy to do those too. I, I don't I don't have much luck with a rotary cutter. I'm not I'm not good at it. But you know, I do have one. All right, let's see. What if we get this in here this does not want to go in it's sticking to the interfacing that's oh we're going to have to cut the length of, i mean this way a little bit too all right all right all right there we go let's get it straight Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna cut off this edge right here. It really should go a little bit further in, but I have a feeling I need to stuff it some more. All right, so that feels, so you could turn this and make your, your dark blue, and mine will do that with one of them. And then when you open it up, it's the seashells. We could do that too. The extra that I cut off of the sunflower one, well, on the sunflower journal, I actually made pockets and everything. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now let's get our um, our manila folder. Okay, we need to change scissors. Uh, the center of these have this natural fold. So I want to make sure that I use this so it can kind of form my spine.
All right, so there's my, yep, that fits. All right, so I'm gonna slip this in. I am gonna kind of turn it this way. Not that I think this print would show, but <laughs> I don't know, just in case. Oh, we said that we were gonna do one of them the other way. Okay, well, I'll do it this way. We'll do it. No, I, I still don't want the print to show. Okay, so we'll do it that way. But we might fold it the other way when we go to fold. All right. All right, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is take both of these over to my sewing machine. And I am going to stitch around. And I have to change out thread. Because right now I think I have green in there. I don't want green. Um, I probably want a blue on this one. But I probably want a white on this one. Um, so... I'm gonna do that off camera. If you don't have a sewing machine, that's okay too. You could literally glue this all down, which I am gonna put a layer of glue so that things don't slide around. You could glue this down and you could run like a pretty hand stitch yourself along the edge just to finish it off so nothing happens to it. Or you could take some ribbon, like wide ribbon. I'll see if I have, I had a piece I threw in here. I have my little bucket of scraps. Okay, well, I can't find my wide piece of ribbon. But say you had ribbon that was wide like that, you could take it and glue it around all the way and give a really pretty edge without having sewn. But I am going to sew because I am going to make sewing, a, a, a think, a good part of this uh, project. So I will be right back. All right. So that took me a lot longer <laughs> than what I expected because I couldn't figure out what was my sewing machine was acting up. And so I actually got off. I've had it for a year now, a little over a year. And I got off of the, uh, the sewing machine because I couldn't get the bobbin to load. And I went and Googled some YouTube videos and lo and behold, I learned tons of new things about my simple little machine. I have a brother, 27, oh, I did not cut that well at all. 27 something, it's one of the lower models. It was from HSN. I just wanted it mainly for crafting and it works great if you, you know, load your thread properly. So I thought I hadn't loaded my bobbin correctly. Turns out it wasn't the bobbin. It was the the um, the thread itself. I had missed a loop. All right, so there we go. Here's number one. Oh, and the other thing, I did not have, I did not have um, white thread. So we had to go with blue. Look at that. I mean, you know. All right, so I'm cutting off, so all of the edges will be raw, except for, you know, of course, where I've sewn. But um, that's, that's it, it is going to fray still. It is still going to give us some fray. So that's, that. those are our two. They're going like this and like this. And um, they're going to have about a one-inch spine. I can probably get two small signatures in that one inch spine especially i think it's this most likely this but oh my gosh they're doing something across the street and now the cockatoo is having a fit they're pumping sand under a house and um i live in the south where everything sinks and so you have to maintain those kinds of things and so, okay, so I think this one is going to be the regular lined journal. And this one will be our, kind of our, our, our junkish journal. I'll see how it goes. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for joining me. And as always, I will see you on the next video. Bye.